Hey, I want to talk about cross harp on the chromatic. Cross harp is a term uh, that diatonic blues harp players should be familiar with. It's what we call second position. It's playing G in the key of G on a C harmonica. Or it's playing in the key of A on a D harmonica. It's playing a fifth above the key that is stamped on the harmonica. That's cross harp, and for most harmonica players, it's the majority of where we spend our time. So, the default for blues players when they pick up a chromatic harmonica is whatever the draw chord is. In this case, it's a D minor. So, a lot of harp players will start goofing around in D minor first, um, but I want to show you there's uh, some very strong and compelling reasons to investigate cross harp on the chromatic harmonica. Playing in G on the C chromatic harmonica, I want to demonstrate something. There's a perception that these two instruments are really tuned differently. Um, however, there's a section of both instruments um, that's tuned the same. I want to show you this to you. Same exact breath pattern on both instruments. The reason why this is working is because on both harmonicas, right in the middle, there is a C major scale, starting on hole number four on this instrument. That's a breath pattern that will yield a major scale starting on hole number four. Same breath pattern on hole number five on this instrument. And we also have the note below that. the B natural. So because of that we have um, a lot of familiar cross harp uh, breathing patterns on both instruments in the middle of the harp. Not necessarily on the bottom end. The big difference is on the chromatic G is always a blow note. You can play it as a blow note here too. But most of us are used to playing hole number two draw. And that's home base. So we get on a chromatic and it's not there and it frustrates us. And I think that's probably the main reason why uh, blues players don't jump on the key of G right away on the chromatic harmonica. Um, I'm going to... So that's the similarities. So you could play... on both harmonicas the same way. Everything that I've played is the same exact breathing pattern, but it's moved up one hole on the chromatic. So hole number three draw becomes hole number four draw. That's the big difference. Getting used to G as a blow note uh, is kind of like you gotta have the attitude of hole six blow. as acting the same one octave down. Uh, anyway, I want to tell you this presentation that I'm giving you uh, is something that I was privileged to, uh, to deliver at the 2018 SPA convention in St. Louis, Missouri, August of last year. Um, I wanted to present this, the the same information because it was I was kind of like it's a shame that nobody recorded this. I have an audio recording, but no video. Uh, this was the outline that I followed, and I thought, well, I'll just present it and put it on YouTube. However, it was an hour long presentation, so I'm not going to go over everything, but. 
there's I want to talk about incorporating the slide into this familiar breathing pattern thing um, and the first two notes that I want to talk about are not sharps or flats it's C natural and F natural there's an alternate way to play C using the slide on the chromatic harmonica and an alternate way to play F. It's extremely important. I think that it is the most important foundational chromatic harmonica technique that I could teach you. And so this, when we apply the alternate F and C to a C major scale, uh, here's, a, here's a C major scale, just regular, no slide. Uh, there's a lot of inhaling and exhaling and it has a choppy feeling. When we incorporate the slide F, all of a sudden we have uh, three blow notes in a row. Uh, then when we incorporate the slide C, we have three draw notes in a row. So that one change uh, for the harmonica player Maybe not the listener, but for the player, there's a feeling of smoothness, and it feels like you could play the scale faster. So, incorporating the alternate F and C, extremely important in the key of C, as it turns out, our, uh, our foundational scale for a G blues is based on a C major scale. It's the G mixolydian or dominant scale. So we incorporate the same principle. We're going to use the alternate C's and F in this G dominant scale. So, so the first thing that I would teach you about incorporating the slide in improvising in the key of G is not a sharp or a flat note. It's, it's the C and the F natural. Um, the next thing that I would show you for G blues is a B flat. And on this instrument, we are getting B flat by bending B down a half step. There's the B. There's a B flat. Once again with B flat. have to bend the note to get the B flat. I'm also bending that uh, same hole, B, it's a B natural, it's a draw note, hole three draw, I'm bending it to B flat, I'm also getting an A out of it. Anyway, producing an A and a B flat on this harmonica is very different. We're not doing these half bends. Um, B flat is simply whole three draw with the slide. Something you gotta get used to, it's different. You gotta get used to A being just a straight draw note. So, all this blues vocabulary centered around hole number three that most of us have, we gotta translate that to Anyway, B flat, that would be um, the first uh, sharper flat note that I would show you for getting around in G. The next one I would show you is, is C sharp, which is part of the blues scale. Um, and easy to find a C sharp because it's easy to find C on this instrument. Hole number one blow is a C, uh, an octave above that, hole four and hole five blow. Uh, C sharp is simply pushing the slide in. Getting you to incorporate that into your improvisation because for us getting a C sharp on this instrument is 
hole for draw bent. You know, we're, we have to bend that hole to get the C sharp. <laughs> I'm going to go back to talking about B flat. Um, B flat in the second octave of a diatonic harmonica is a problem. And it's a problem that harmonica players solve in a couple different ways. One of them is to use the overblow technique. We don't have a B flat up here, and we can't bend the major third down. There's a B natural. Standard diatonic harmonica, that note won't bend. However, hole six blow, you can do an overblow to get the B flat. Uh, the alternate thing to do is to tune that hole, uh, or the, um, I'm sorry, hole seven draw to tune that down a half step. I know some guys that do that, it's an, and that's a cool thing. Um, and there's other tuning alterations where you could make that draw be uh, a note that bends. It doesn't bend on a standard tune harmonica. Anyway, what I want to show you on the chromatic harmonica is that we got B flats in all three octaves and it's just push button E's. It's right there. So the second octave B-flat is no big deal. It's the same as the first octave. All the octaves are tuned the same on the chromatic. It's pretty cool. There's the high B-flat. So anyway, um, I'm going to stop there. There's other chromatic pitches and use of the slide that I could show you. Uh, but I just want to leave it at that. Getting used to B-flat getting used to A and getting used to G as a blow note. That's all kind of the beginning stages of uh, starting to improvise in the key of G on a C chromatic. I would also say that um, becoming familiar with this dominant scale is also an important foundational step. Blue scale, uh, which I demonstrated with the C sharp, um, the minor pentatonic scale, the major pentatonic scale, let me just talk about that real quick. Uh, in the middle and upper octaves of your diatonic harmonica, There's a very, uh, a, should be a familiar breathing pattern. You can bring that almost directly over to the chromatic. There's a slight change. The breath pattern is the same. There's one segment of three notes that covers two holes on this harmonica and three holes on this one. It's just a slight adjustment that you have to make, but. Uh, then, on the diatonic, the major pentatonic scale, we're used to doing a half bend on hole three to get the note A. Uh, this instrument, we just play A as a draw note. So um, the first octave functions the same tuning and breath pattern as for the most part, as the second octave of this one. So uh, that's something to get used to. Um, once you learn the, um, the B flat, the alternate F, and the C sharp with the slide, you can start incorporating slide ornamentation with those slide notes, those three. So, uh, using the B flat. And that's a kind of an expressive advantage of the chromatic. The F. Uh, then the C sharp.
You could string two of these together. I will do, um, uh, I will use the B flat in a slide turn and the F. Anyway, that's an example of something cool that you can do in the chromatic that you can't do on a diatonic harmonica is the slide turn. Um, a lot of uh, more things I could talk about it, uh, regarding improvising over the blues on a C chromatic harmonica. I'm going to leave you with this intriguing thing. Uh, sometimes on the 12-hole harmonica. Hmm. Be natural, and it's not there. I run out of holes. So, here I have a 14 hole harmonica. It's uh, essentially the same as the 12 hole, but we have two holes, two extra holes at the bottom. And uh, so, that thing. Now I have a B natural, and I also have a B flat. and the money note, the low G. Great for improvising and playing blues in G. I like having the low B natural, the low B flat, the low A, and the low G. Uh, so, something to think about uh, as you're exploring um, the key of G on a C chromatic. Uh, of course, you have the same range and more with a 16-hole chromatic. So, uh, anyway, I'm just going to leave it at that. Like I said, this whole lecture was um, was an hour, so I just wanted to give kind of the Reader's Digest version of that. Um, the whole point being, is there's a familiar breathing pattern framework that you can bring over to the chromatic if you've never played the chromatic but you're an intermediate advanced diatonic player uh, you're not reinventing the wheel, you're not starting over there's some f degree of familiarity, you just gotta get used to the blow G you gotta get used to A as being a, just a straight draw note, you gotta get used to the slide B flat and you should probably get used to the slide C sharp uh, for that particular blue note. Anyway I hope this helps somebody.